Power outlets with built-in USB ports are excellent for installing in kitchens, guest rooms, and anywhere that you need to charge. And you'll never have to worry about your charging brick going missing and ending up in your kid's bedroom. Today, I've got six of Amazon's best-selling 60-watt USB electrical outlets, and we're gonna see if a name brand like Leviton is really worth twice as much as a generic brand. And as always, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, and I bought all these outlets from Amazon with my own money. The least expensive outlet we're testing today is this $25 MicMe 65-watt gallium nitride power delivery outlet with one USB-A port and one USB-C port. The MicMe claims to support power delivery for 5 to 20 volts on the USB-C port with a maximum of 3.25 amps at 20 volts, which is 65 watts. And in my testing, it was able to supply each of the listed voltages, but only delivered 56.9 watts maximum when connected to my Anker 737 power bank, which is capable of charging all the way up to 120 watts. The MicMe also claims to support quick charge protocol on the USB-A port, and in my testing, it was able to supply 5, 9, 12, and 20 volts using QC 3.0, but older QC and QC 2.0 devices were not able to properly negotiate voltages higher than 5 volts. Next, for $25, is this very similar looking outlet from Best10 which also has a PD-enabled USB-C port supporting voltages from 5 to 20 volts and a USB-A port that's labeled QC for quick charge. In my testing, the Bestin was able to supply each of the PD voltages properly, and at 20 volts, it supplied a maximum of 56.9 watts to the Anker 737 power bank, exactly the same as the MicMe. Also, just like the MicMe, the Bestin was able to supply 5, 9, 12, and 20 volts to QC 3.0 devices on the USB-A port, but was not backwards compatible with older QC and QC 2.0 devices and only delivered 5 volts to those devices. Next, for $32, is this 65-watt gallium nitride outlet from Amerisense with one USB-C port supporting power delivery and one USB-A port that supports the Quick Charge 3.0 standard. In my testing, the Amerisense was able to supply all the standard PD voltages from its USB-C port, and at 20 volts, it provided a maximum of 61 1.3 watts to the Anker 737 power bank, roughly 5 watts more than the previous two outlets. The Amerisense was also able to supply 5, 9, 12, and 20 volts from its USB-A port to a QC 3.0 device, but unlike the previous two outlets, it was also backwards compatible with older QC devices and was able to supply 2 amps at 9 volts to my QC 2.0 soldering iron. After that, for $42 is the Leviton T5632W, which interestingly is advertised as 60 watt USB on Amazon, but on the box itself it's more clear that it supports a maximum of 50 watts on its USB-C port and 10 watts via USB-A for a total of 60 watts, instead of 60 watts from a single port. In my testing, the Leviton outlet supplied 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts from its USB-C port, which is notably missing compatibility for 12 volt devices, but that's not a surprise because it does accurately describe which voltages it's compatible with right on the box. Connecting to the Anker 737 power bank, the Leviton delivered just 46.6 watts at 20 volts, about 25% less than the Amerisense. The Leviton doesn't make any claims to supporting the QC standard on its USB-A port, and in my testing, it was limited to just 5 volts at 1.5 amps on USB-A. Next, for $45, is the upgraded version of the Amerisense outlet that includes two USB-C ports with PD compatibility and a single USB-A port supporting QC 3.0. This Amerisense outlet performed almost identically to the previous one, correctly supplying all PD voltages and at 20 volts, it reached a maximum of 62 watts when charging the Anker 737 power bank, narrowly putting it in first place above the other Amerisense outlet. However, unlike the other Amerisense outlet, the USB-A port only supplied 5, 9, and 12 volts via QC 3.0, but it was backwards compatible with older QC devices, properly delivering 9 volts at 2 amps to my older soldering iron. And last, the most expensive outlet in this video is the $57 Top Greener Gallium Nitride PD outlet which has a single USB-C port capable of a maximum of 60 watts and a standard non-QC enabled USB-A port. In my testing, the Top Greener was able to supply all the PD voltages via its USB-C port, and at 20 volts, it supplied a maximum of 55 watts to the Anker 737 power bank, which puts it in fifth place just behind the MicMe and Bestin. And the USB-A port performed as advertised, which is to say that it only supports 5 volts and is not QC compatible. So that means that the highest performing outlets so far are the two from Amerisense, but almost all the outlets were able to more or less live up to their performance claims. However, one of the most important things for me when I'm permanently wiring a device into my house is the same safety of that device. And all the outlets in this video are UL certified, meaning that they've been tested by the third party UL testing lab to be safe under normal use and even reasonable misuse. To test their safety for myself, I ran a maximum load test using a projector pulling between 55 and 60 watts, and I recorded the temperature after one hour from the front of the outlet as well as inside the wall. And after one hour, the lowest external temperature came from the Amerisense single USB outlet, which measured 55 degrees when peeking through the USB-A port. 
And the lowest temperature measured from inside the wall was the Leviton, which had a maximum of 45.7 degrees. The Amerisense with two USB-C ports got approximately 15% hotter than the single USB-C port model, but the highest temperatures by far came from the Bestin and Micmi, which each measured over 77 degrees Celsius from the outside and 66 degrees Celsius from inside the wall. As I mentioned, UL certification is also supposed to include testing for safety during reasonable misuse, and all the outlets claim to have overcharging and overheating protection. So to test this, I used an uncertified USB-C adapter to pull an increasing amount of power until the outlets shut themselves off. And I found that all the outlets performed as expected, with the Best In, Micmi, and Amerisense dual USB outlet supplying exactly 65 watts before shutting off, the single USB-C Amerisense supplied 58 watts before shutting off, the Leviton shut down at 50 watts, and the Top Greener actually refused to supply power to my uncertified charger and repeatedly shut down at just 42 watts. I also tested the behavior of charging from both ports simultaneously, and I found that the Amerisense outlets both adjusted their total output to provide the maximum charging speed for both outlets, without going over the total rated wattage. The Best In and Micmi definitely didn't do as well and only provided 10.8 and 10.9 watts via the USB-C port when a USB-A device was also charging at 7.5 watts. And the Leviton and Top Greener outlets provided the same amount of power to the USB-C port regardless of whether there was a device plugged into the USB-A port, which is the result of the USB-A port only being 5 volts and not supporting quick charge. And quick charge is great, but the downside of supporting it on the USB-A port means that whenever a new device is plugged in, all the outlets need to renegotiate their power to make sure that the outlet won't go over its maximum wattage. And as a result, the Micmi, Best End, and both Amerisense outlets briefly drop power to existing devices whenever a new device is plugged in, which could be an issue if you're using them to power a non-battery powered device. I also measured each outlet's efficiency and idle power consumption, and I found that the Leviton, Top Greener, and Amerisense outlets had less than 10 milliwatts of idle power consumption, while the Best End and Micmi were much higher at around 30 milliwatts, even with nothing plugged in. And it's probably due to this blue LED that's constantly lit and as far as I can tell doesn't serve any purpose. And the last subject that might influence your decision is ease of installation. And with the exception of the Leviton, all the outlets were basically identical in size and connections with standard screw-in clamp style terminals. While the Leviton comes with wire pigtails and the entire Leviton outlet is significantly larger than the rest, so it might be difficult to fit into some smaller electrical boxes. So all things considered, which USB outlet is the best? The dual USB outlet from Amerisense was by far the best performer, but it does come with one of the highest price tags. The single USB-C version of the Amerisense also performed very well, and the only negative thing that I have to say about it is that the USB-C port itself doesn't feel like it's manufactured as well, and you can feel the USB-C cable sliding against the plastic on the housing rather than going straight into the metal port. If you want an outlet that can provide constant power to its USB-A or USB-C port while plugging in other devices, the Leviton and Top Greener are your only options. And between the two, the Top Greener had slightly higher charging speeds and also supports 12 volt USB-C, while the Leviton had slightly better efficiency, created less heat, and cost a lot less. And even though the Micmi and Bestin are cheap, I don't think that I would recommend either of them due to their high idle power consumption and inability to provide more than 10 watts via USB-C when also using the USB-A port. I do have links to all the outlets in this video down in the description. And as always, I appreciate when you use those links since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting unsponsored and unbiased reviews like this one, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.